Assalamualaikum and uh, welcome to Jan Sewing Solutions. So we're going to be getting Daddy, straight back what? into. Shh, be quiet now. Uh, we're going to be getting back into work from a new, different setting. Um, now I'm going to be showing you a wedding suit that I'm going to be redesigning. And she hasn't made wedding suits for a long time yet. <laughs> right, I need you out of here. You go to the table. I'm going under the bed. All right, you go under the table. <clears throat> okay, so I got interrupted a little bit there by my wonderful assistant called Enaya. Yeah, Enaya? No. Who's hiding under the table now? Okay, so um, getting back to work, getting back to our talk. This is a wedding suit, it's a family wedding and I'm going to be doing a little bit of re-adaptation to this. Uh, the original suit that's come is a fully heavy beadwork type of suit. It's on a jamawar type of a fabric and it's had handwork, all the crystals and sequins and um, cut work. Uh, Katadana is called uh, work done on it quite heavy work okay now the original to this was uh, this um, uh, what's it called a French French crepe uh, silver and it has work on the bungee now the fabric French crepe has sort of in a way gone out of fashion with these type of clothes um, a lot of the fabrics nowadays that are used are jamawa type of fabrics so I'm going to be doing away with this uh, salwar and lining and this uh, hopefully we're going to make a separate suit and uh, she can wear, you know, it's for my niece and um, my nephew's wife, this suit. Naya, yeah, please be quiet. Uh, so this one we're temporarily doing away with. Now what I bought with this fabric uh, was this Jamawar in the gold colour and uh, we're going to be making this into the trouser and hopefully this into the dress and then I've bought a lighter weight fabric uh, fairly similar colour slightly darker shade for the lining so I'm going to be putting this into the lining I'm going to be sewing this suit I've bought a, a few additional things to go with this because mm. I want to add um, a little bit of detailing so this is going to be the trouser this is going to be the dress and then I've <coughs> further bought these little uh, detailed little stuff to go with this is uh, these little bobble type of um, almost like crystal type of and I want to add these to the bottom of the dress and also you can uh, how do you can play under the table uh, so we're going to be adding these to the bottom hem of the dress a few of them and then we're going to be adding a few on to the edges of the scarf and uh, the scarf uh, it had an original white trim added to it which didn't look right so what I'm going to be doing I've left that with her temporarily to unpick and take off the shh, Naya be quiet please uh, I've told her to take off the original and what we're going to do is um, add this Banarsi Jamawar fabric to the edges of the dupatta as well so we're going to go into the cutting of this um, now with these suits the good thing is that uh, this suit is actually had it's got to work on the back of the gummies okay. and the front of the gummies so it's a full very heavy work um, gummies and absolutely gorgeous suits if you're interested in buying uh, something similar to this uh, then I've got a limited number in stock which hopefully I will be showing you and uh, guiding you on how to purchase I've got a beautiful beautiful dusty pink in this which I'm going to give you a glimpse of hopefully towards the end of the tutorial so when I've done uh, the making of this I will show you the other colors that I have available in this uh, the way they originally come and then the additional jamawar if you wanted that as the trouser then we can sort of organize that inshallah so uh, going back onto the sewing let's put these away <laughs> now i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do is um, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut the trouser 
Uh, one thing that I sometimes emphasize with fabrics like this is it's a very difficult fabric to sew. Yes, uh, yes. In terms of um, sewing is easy but it does leave a lot of threads so uh, a little bit of guidance on that is one, to make sure that your floral falls in the one direction and secondly, as you cut this, I would highly recommend that you actually overlock these because it does tend to fray a lot and uh, you do end up losing it out now uh, on the... So what, what we're going to do with this is we're going to cut the two. We're going to have to cut them two and two because um, obviously it has... Now I'm going to be edging the dupatta in this too. So to edge the dupatta, one thing that you can bear in mind is this has got... We're going to have some fabric left over from the edges anyway. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take off for the edges of the scarf. And uh, the reason why I'm going to take it off from the edge uh, is because this is already... Um, grain. Uh, this is already, you know, edged, and that will stop part of the fraying. So I bought three yards. So hopefully, uh, two portions of the cutout of this, and then maybe some a few odd pieces, will actually hopefully compensate for that. So we put the camera to a side. Move the camera along a little bit. And now hopefully, hopefully, what we're going to have is a lot cleaner, nicer videos uh, in this room. Um, I've got more light, original light coming from outside as well. And uh, the other thing is that we're going to have, uh, I will be organising hopefully in the near future, uh, a workroom downstairs uh, and more of the showing of stuff from outside in the garden. So in the long run, I think this is going to work in our favor. So what we're gonna do now is, my right hand is actually <laughs> cutting from that end. So I've got a nice good work uh, station. Okay. Okay, I've just double laid this and I'm just gonna double cut this. I don't want to see your we don't want to see your face. It's not bald. Boy. It's not bald. It's, it's, so it's not bald, but I have a scarf thing on. I've got a scarf thing on. I have a scarf on, she tied it up and then um uh, and then I got chalk and then I took it back off and I said, I'm going to have a cape for it now. I don't want a scarf on my head. Oh, you've got a cape now. Yeah. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Look at me. I've got a black scarf and a black cape. Shh, shh, shh. So if you're going to edge any scarves, then the way to go about this is to take mm. off the edges because we've got adequate fabric. Since this is all going to go in one direction, we're going to be putting two pieces for the trouser from one piece and then two pieces from the, of the trouser from the other piece. So generally you get leftover pieces anyway. So hopefully, hopefully this will eliminate part of the problem. And now a while back I did some wedding suits and uh, I had severe problems with them because of the amount of fraying. <coughs> A lot, a lot of this um, edging stuff, I had to pre-prepare uh, it with overlocking it prior to attaching it onto the garment itself. So it presented real problems. Um, always look towards eliminating problems if you can make it easier for yourself and if you find solutions within, you know, there's no fixed way of, uh, with sewing, it's all about trial and error and you try and constantly improve so hope hopefully what we're gonna do is have all this for our edging of the scarves and then we've got this to cut out our trouser so i'm gonna use a pre-cut out trouser 
as the measurement. This is uh, one, if you remember, one of her, my niece's other brothers got married a while back and I actually did these for her. Uh, this was a trouser to uh, Asim Jofa suit that I previously designed for her. So I'm just going to use this as... No, I don't need that. <laughs> Take that away. I found my eye patch. Billy, Billy. My hair. <coughs> okay, well, she's doing that. I'll show you guys. So, um, I think it was made out of this kind of fabric with it, but it's a bit like the same. But, um, it's a bit like the same, and but it's a bit too like light and not stretchy. And this one is kind of stretching, so that's how it is. And like, I'll bring this one a bit more closer. And okay, that's now, now that's it. Now your lesson is over. <laughs> okay, so I've got a bit, bit of a darker chalk. Um, <coughs> so as I mentioned, I this fabric has a direction. So what we're going to be doing yeah, is cutting bed. in the one direction. And uh, I need a quite a big fold, a turnover space. So up to there is our turning point. This is the hip point. So up to the hip point, we just take basically a marking. I know I'm rushing this, but uh, if you want a detailed um, instructions on the cutting, then there are numerous, numerous videos that I have done over the years on trouser cutting and so on. Now normally I'll just take a rough guidance from uh, the template trouser which is basically what I've done. This is the rough guidance uh, from the crutch to the uh, bottom turning, uh, the poncha, uh, the hip point and the waist and then this is the crutch cutting. So I don't really go in, I'm not going to go too much in details of the trouser cutting because I'm going to let you look for the videos and uh, search out the hundreds of videos that are on each particular subject which hopefully you can locate and take guidance from. So I'm going to be making two suits which are both heavy embroidered suits. Uh, I'm going to be showing you all the colours that are available in those suits and if you want to order these heavy embroidered work suits then you know, it's something that we carry in limited stock. Now sometimes, uh, you know when there's weddings and stuff, people go around searching and uh, they have difficulty finding and there is so much variety available in the shops that I think these days what customers have become is really too fussy and not focused on exactly, you know, they're looking for something to actually captivate them and it's very difficult to find it's very difficult to find something that's going to really captivate you uh, unless you've got a good imagination and sadly sadly that's uh, that's something that people lack they don't have an imagination they just want something to shout at them but it's not going to shout at you unless you have a good imagination and you can imagine yourself in that's my auntie like your auntie which auntie Oh, your auntie hasn't got an imagination. <laughs> she doesn't read too much. She doesn't. No, but she, she doesn't. She's she, 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 naughty. Don't talk. She's going to listen to the video and then she's going to pick on you. She's going to tell you, have you been talking about me? Right, so this next one, what we'll do is we'll take it from the other end. And that way, any fabric that's left in between, you can always combine it and use it for something else. Now I have a thing of actually combining this and making it for Right, we're gonna use the we're gonna use the template of the already cut trouser 
we all we need to do is do a slight bit of an alteration to this which the alteration is going to be that we're going to make it a little bit wider but um one we've got to make sure that it's going in the one direction so that's the main that's the most important thing secondly it's going to be wider and if you're struggling with if it's a very very large size and if you're struggling for crutch width then you can always add a small amount of a piece inside the inner crutch which is uh, the back crutch area to make it give it the bit of width and uh, that will give you the good drop and also it will give you a very good um, comfortable comfortable wear and you can always use you know these pieces that you've got, got cut out from the sides for actually doing that and and by the way we've moved house as well uh, uh yes sir by the way we've moved and it's house. her first time doing it in her new house hmm so she she must be really happy that i think it's the viewers that should be really happy because we're back online inshallah because we have been away and I haven't actually checked my emails so I'm sure there are very 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 many emails there I have had lots of messages saying where have you disappeared to but obviously moving isn't an easy thing and it's these a hard, are new very build, hard job isn't it it is and it's new built properties so we had no you have to move one thing in one day and then make the drawers and then paint the drawers and then Make the bed covers and then oh, yeah. do the storage Lots. room, break the rooms up. Yeah, and carry all the furniture from that house and uh, fix the garden. and Yeah, and then blah blah, and then blah blah, and then blah blah, and then blah blah. Right, so I'm going to add uh, just a little bit of an extension to this uh, crutch. Because... Um, just to give it just a little bit more width it doesn't really really require a lot so that's the trouser we're gonna add this piece I'm gonna stitch this and then hopefully take this and um, I've no overlocker here so I'm gonna have to take it to the other house and well, her room is not sleeping yet I'm gonna sleep in her bed okay this is we need the drum roll we need the drum roll Okay, I think we're gonna stop here. We've done most of the video. This is the bits that we've got left over. It was three yards of the Jamawar fabric that I purchased for this, and obviously I had in mind that I was I had to do uh, the edging on the dupatta as well. So what we'll do now is. Um, make the preparations for cutting the kameez. I might use some of this jamawar just to trim off certain parts of the kameez because uh, we obviously need to blend it in. So these pieces, for the moment, what we'll do is we'll put them away safely, um, try and cut precisely and try and minimize wastage as much as possible. And with this fabric, try and uh, cut and fold and put it in a maybe like a bag or something and store it away because it does leave a lot of threads and if this I'm, comes in contact I'm with other, if it comes in contact with other fabrics then you are uh, going to end up uh, actually just wasting it and losing it it is quite an expensive fabric it's uh, about five pounds a meter or even more uh, five pound eight pound it varies uh, depending on the quality I have paid, uh, you know, just little odd bits to go with this suit, ended up costing me almost £30. So there are always, if you want to do your own spicing up, then you will need to invest a little bit more than what you put in the suit. But it's all this small detailing and the personal touch that makes it the designer suit. So I hope you enjoy uh, watching and uh, continue to learn. A little bit from these videos so we're gonna go on to cutting the kameez join me again soon inshallah